Good morning and what a beautiful morning it is to look at 10 tips for a learner driver to get insurance. So I'm sure we've all heard by now that learning to drive normally takes about 40 hours, plus another 30 hours of personal, blah, 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 blah. All right, Josh, you're boring me, I get it. And yes, we all know that mum and dad passed the driving test in 4.48 hours, but we also know, unfortunately, those days ended about 30 years ago, when there were only about four cars on the road and DVSA wasn't even born until 2014, so. I mean, there was something before DVSA, but officially, and roads are getting busier and busier, and as they get busier, driving's gonna get harder, and it's gonna take longer to pass driving test. Yada, yada, Josh, you're boring me again. Okay, I get it. So the driving lesson side of things is all covered. Your driving instructor's got insurance, but if you want to learn in your own car, or you want to get some practice in with a relative mum, dad, whoever, you're going to need insurance, which can be an absolute minefield of so let's try and dodge some of those mines, shall we? Now, some of these are going to be more effective once you've actually passed your driving test for your first time, but most of them are for when you're learning as a provisional license holder as well. It really depends on the policy or on the insurance company. They're all really, really good tips. And I'm gonna give you an example at the end using as many of these tips as I can to show you what I mean. But first we need to do two things. We need to do the L double S. Like, subscribe and share. Yeah, do that, that helps. That helps me a lot. And we also need to understand what learner insurance actually is. So learner insurance or provisional insurance or provisional driver insurance is just car insurance for anyone that's currently learning to drive and doesn't hold a full UK driving license. Basically, you've decided to learn to drive, you need your provisional driving license and you need car insurance. Until you pass your driving test, this insurance will cover you to drive a specific vehicle. Specific. There's a few different ways of doing this. If you're using mum and dad's car, for instance, you can become a named driver on their policy, although it's not always the best option. And I'll tell you later why. And learner insurance is also generally a lot cheaper than full license holder insurance especially if you're quite young with zero, no claims, because especially if the person that's going on the policy as a named driver is quite experienced. So if they've got 10 years driving experience and they've had zero accidents and they've got lots of no claims, that's all gonna go in your favor and it's gonna make it very cheap. So don't be surprised if once you pass your test, your insurance actually goes up. But you might be asking, Josh, what do I actually need to get learner insurance? Now, every insurer has different criteria, so it makes it slightly more difficult, but here are the basics of what you need. And most insurers will offer you insurance provided you meet these. One, you need a valid UK provisional driving license. Two, you're a UK resident aged 17 to 35. Three, you've got no driving convictions or offenses or ones waiting. Four, the car you're driving is registered and has a valid MOT. And the final one is your car can't be worth too much money. Yes, you did hear me correctly. Some insurers will only accept learner insurance on cars worth 10,000 or less. Others will accept insurance on 20,000 or less. Moral to the story, don't try and learn to drive in a Ferrari or you're gonna struggle. Okay, let's get stuck into these tips. Are you ready? If you haven't already, like and subscribe and share. Help others find this video as well. Otherwise, it's just gonna go down a dark hole. Number one, get a policy for as long as you need. If it's not gonna take you a year to learn to drive, don't get a full annual policy. Two, always get comprehensive insurance. There's three levels, one, two, and three. Get the third one, I'll tell you why later. Three, pick the right car for the job. You want a car that is insurance graded one, not three. Three is bad, one is good. This means you're gonna have cheaper insurance. For add a parent or someone older or with some experience in driving that is going to occasionally drive your car because this is likely to bring the price down. Five, if you're planning to drive mum, dad's car or another relative's car that's already got an insurance uh, policy on there, get a separate learner insurance policy rather than being a named driver. This is gonna protect their no claims. Six, get a black box. Yes, I know you hate those words, I'll explain. Seven, start insurance on the next word working day. Insurance companies don't like working weekends and they certainly don't like working the same day. Eight, increase your voluntary access. Only put what you can afford, but if you put it at zero, your premium is gonna be big. Nine, pay up front. If you pay monthly, you, you're going to pay interest as well, which means your policy price is going to be higher. And 10, make sure you put your mileage as accurate as possible. I'm a driving instructor, so I'm gonna do between 25 and 30,000 miles, but you're not a driving instructor. Chances are you're gonna be doing between eight and 12. Work it out on having a think, have a chat with mom and dad, see what they think, but try not to overestimate too much because that is going to put your premium up. 
Okay, now a good explanation version. Tip number one, insure yourself for as long as you think you need it. If you think it's gonna take you 12 months to pass your driving test, which is unlikely, then insure yourself for 12 months. The problem is if it takes you three months or six months, the rest of those, that policy is going to be void. And in most cases, that's going to put your price up of your premium significantly, which means you're gonna to want to shop around rather than just going straight on with the company you're with. So if you think it's gonna take you three to six, get a short-term policy, pay as you go. There's loads of temp temporary cover companies. The example I used today for the example below was Go Shorty, just because they had three nice easy options, an hour, a day, or however many weeks you want, up to six months. So it seemed like a no-brainer. Number two, always pick the comprehensive insurance. If you're wondering what I mean, there's three different levels of insurance. You've got level one, which is um, third party only, meaning if you have an accident, should we call it an accident, you're only going to be covered for their vehicle damage. Your vehicle is not covered at all. Then you've got level two, which is fire and theft. Um, so again, third party and fire and theft means if your car ends up setting on fire. And finally, third is comprehensive, which is all of the below. And if you have an accident, whether or not it's your fault, you are covered. And comprehensive, believe it or not, is normally, is more often than not going to be cheaper than the other two anyway. I know it doesn't sound like it makes sense, but reason being there's a hell of a lot more companies out there doing comprehensive insurance, which means there's a lot more competition. And wad, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Competition means cheaper. Number three, and this is a big one. It's a big one, why? Because we can change this one. There's some things you just can't change with driving insurance, but what you can change is your car. Choose the right car. Now, insurance groups cars into different categories, different groups of insurance levels. Group one insurance cars are going to be the lowest cost of insurance. You've got two and then you've got three. Three's got to be the highest. So group one cars are generally going to be your small city cars. Uh, when I had a brief look earlier, the, the cheapest group one car for insurance purposes at the moment was a VW up. But that was only based on one website. So have yourselves a look around, just search group one cars. Point being, pick a group one car if you want cheaper insurance. That is something you can change. So be sensible. Number four, make sure the person that you are, that's going to be supervising you while driving is an experienced driver, preferably lots of no claims, preferably no accidents, very experienced. This is gonna bring the price of your policy right down. Because the way the insurance company sees it is if you're driving with a sensible person, they're going to encourage you and help you to drive sensibly, which is gonna reduce the risk of an accident. Number five, if you plan to learn with relatives or family or someone that already owns a car and they've got an insurance policy on there already, get yourself a separate learner insurance policy on top of their policy. And not just a bit cheaper, we're talking 600 pound plus cheaper to get a learner policy separate than becoming a named driver on your parents' policy. And as you can see here, something I picked up quickly off the internet, just to show you this is the price of being named on someone's policy uh, and then getting learner insurance policy separately on the same person's car, a lot less, and they're still probably gonna keep their no claims. But you've got to read the small print as well. Don't just take my word for it. Number six. I'm swearing, I know, get a black box. No one likes those words. But let's face it, quick facts, under 25, average insurance policy costs around 1,800 pounds per year. Black box insurance, however, can be less than 1,200 pounds. That's 600 pounds savings for having a black box. And let's face it, if you're new to driving, you've got no, no claims, if you get six points in your first two years, you're gonna be banned and starting again anyway. So you're probably gonna to wanna to be driving sensibly anyway. So a black box isn't gonna make any difference. Do the math. Number seven, start insurance on the next working day. Don't ask me why, but insurance companies don't like to work in a hurry. And if you tell them you're desperate, they're gonna charge you more. So ideally, if you are thinking about insuring yourself, make sure there's a working day ahead of you to do that next working day. If you insure yourself on a Saturday, it's gonna be more. If you try and insure yourself on the same day, it's going to be more. Number eight, increase your voluntary access, preferably around 250. If you put it at zero, this is gonna massively increase your premium. Have a play with it, have a go with both. Um, but I've had a play and in my experience, you need a little bit of excess on there just to show you're willing to chip in if anything did happen. Number nine, if you pay monthly for your insurance, you're going to pay interest as well, possibly around 20%, maybe 25%. You'll have to have a look at the percentages of the company. So if you can pay it in one lump sum, do it. It's gonna make it cheaper. Number 10, don't lie about your mileage, but also keep it realistic. What I mean is don't just assume and put yourself down as 25, 30K. I'm a driving instructor and I might do close to 30K. 25 to 30k if you're just learning to drive chances are you're looking closer 
8 to 12k max. Have a chat with mom and dad. As I say, you need to make it as accurate as possible, but don't overestimate it. Okay, let's do a quick example. For this example, I used Go Shorty because I had some smoking hot reviews. It took less than two minutes. And most importantly, it was super easy. I also used a 2016 Volkswagen up 1.0 liter just because they're a band one insurance car, ideal for a first car. When it asked me reason for the insurance, obviously it was because I'm learning to drive and I put in my own car, although I could have changed it to someone else's car, perhaps a relative, mum, dad, etc. I set it to start on the next working day. When I made this video, it was a Friday, so I've actually set it for the Monday. I started off setting the cover for eight weeks, but this could be changed, I'll have a play with it later. The name on the policy is Elephanosa. I'm 19 years old, as you can tell and I'm currently an optical assistant. That was it. And for four weeks insurance, it comes out at around 145 pounds. And then I thought I'd have a play. Let's have a look at what else there is available. So eight weeks is 173 pounds, 12 weeks, 201 pounds. So we're going up in increments of sort of 25 pound-ish for an extra four weeks. And then I finally really upped the answer five months, which came out at 314 pounds. So as you can tell, the more you have, the cheaper the insurance gets. If you only need it for a week though, take the week. If there's a good chance, however, that you're gonna need it for a bit longer, then you might be better off taking a longer policy. And of course, if you'd like to have a look at the Go Shorty website for black box insurance, learn a policy insurance, or just temporary insurance, the link is in the description below. If this has helped, please share it, like it, and subscribe. Help other people get to see this as well. Come on, doesn't cost you much. I am Josh, your driving instructor. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you all soon.